Hello, well, I'm Jason, and welcome to part three of my review of the Marvel Ultimate Graphic Novel Collection. Today, I will be reviewing the books that were released as issues seven, eight, and nine. Getting straight into it, we have Captain America first up, Winter Soldier, written by Ed Brubaker, art by Steve Epton, and this was one of the books I was most anticipating about this series. Um, I'd read a lot of Brubaker's run on Captain America, but this was just before I started collecting, so. It was always one of them books that I thought I'm going to pick up the trade and I've never got round to and You know, so I was so stoked to see it was part of this collection My anticipation of this book was further amped up when I saw that at the San Diego Comic Con They announced that the next Captain America film is going to be called Captain America Winter Soldier So this is this or part of this is going to be adapted for the next film. So I'm Looking forward to getting a bit of maybe a few tidbits that might be coming up in the film so the story basically there's this assassin for the Soviet Union called the Winter Soldier and since the 50s he's been taking out people but he's so good that nobody really knows whether he exists for real or not. But then Captain America and Nick Fury and Agent 13 sort of find out that the Winter Soldier is in fact James Buchanan Barnes better known as Bucky, Captain America's sidekick during World War II who they thought had perished uh, in the same explosion that had for Steve Rogers to fall into the sea and be frozen. So, but now he's alive, and so Captain America feels he can save his friend and turn him back to the good side. Find out what what they have done to Bucky, and he can save him. Um, a really good book. Um, you go through so much in here. Captain America is just like so. You know, he hits him so hard. From the level of that he, his friend's been alive all this time and he has not known to the mystery of why is Bucky working for the Soviets to the that I can help him, I can save him thing that, that Steve has in this book. It's just brilliant. Brubaker's writing as always is top class. The art is really great as well and the covers that they've repinted are really look and many of them look so so awesome. Um I, I would go far as to say that this is the book I've enjoyed most out of the books they've released so far. And just a fantastic book and a really enjoyable story and I think the next film looks like it's going to be a good one if this is going to be the basis of it. Um, what was great for me from a nostalgic point of view was seeing Nick Fury in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, in the regular Marvel Universe with the original Nick Fury it's been years since we've seen that kind of setup and it was great it gave me that kind of you know n nice warm nostalgic feel uh, when I was reading this book seeing Fury in charge. Um, I haven't really got anything negative to say, I like to try and give a balanced review but there's nothing bad to say about this book, I just really enjoyed it and you know, would would totally, without hesitation, give it a, a thumbs up. Uh, the spine, as you can see, there you got your picture, uh, your, your dial that builds up, you've got a little picture there as well as number 44. Uh, inside, um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see the montage that's on the inside. And then you've got your picture of the, the Winter Soldier, your cover page. You've then got everybody who was involved in putting this book together, as well as, as some art of Captain America and Bucky. You then have this introduction, um, which really sets the scene nicely, as well as the story so far. And then they reprint the covers, which there's some really awesome covers. And the art is really good, you can see it's black and white, so it's like a flashback. And then you've got here Captain America. Um, I'll try to get another cover for you. Um, probably the last one, because I do really like this cover. There, there are some really good covers in here. You've then got uh, an article on the artist as well as a nice piece on Ed Brubaker and finally you have this article on Bucky looking at his origins and then we've got our further reading so all in all you know I, I'd say this is a really good book and it's certainly one of my favourites so far next up uh, we released as issue 8 I believe you have the Incredible Hulk Silent Screams written by Peter David art by Dale Keown uh, this book, um, the Hulk is now the Grey Hulk and so he turns to the Grey Hulk at night and then in the day he's Bruce Banner 
The Grey Hulk is a bit more intelligent than the Green Hulk, but not as strong. He sort of has to has, has to lose one, a bit of one to get more of the other. So this book that um, the everybody believes Bruce Banner is dead. Banner's trying to find his wife so you can see she's okay and tell her he's alive. And along the way, he gets dragged into the other adventures along the way. But then eventually he finds her in just totally he never expected to find her. Um, it's a really, really good book, this is. And, and, and like after he sort of found her and then they're on the run, these people are after them. And then they sort of get involved in this whole thing with the scrolls and sort of then the sort of the conclusion because the grey sub in, inside of his mind, Banner and the Grey Hulk have teamed up to lock the Green Hulk behind this big metal door so that he can't get out because neither of them want him out and we sort of like really at the end of the book it sort of goes deeper into why you look at people like the leader and the Red Hulk and the Abomination they were, were, were exposed to gamma radiation they changed but they didn't change their personas they didn't become a totally different person they were still the same people it was just the leader became super intelligent while you know Thunderbolt Ross became super strong, same as Abomination. The Hulk seems to be the only one who's affected by changing his personality when he changes into this gamma radiated monster. On why? And what Peter David does really well here is he addresses that and he sort of gives an explanation in why this happened to Banner in this way, which is just really, really brilliant. And then the conclusion sort of sees a resolution of all of that. But it's just a really good book, it goes off in different places, like I say, the scrolls turn up, even the super scrolls turns up at one point. Um, it's just a really, really good, good book, uh, really enjoyable. Peter David is known as one of the classic Incredible Hulk writers. There are writers that get certain characters, I mean, you go through any comic book, every comic book from the great, the big name titles like um, Spider-Man, like Batman, and Superman, and the and Fantastic Four and the X-Men to lesser known titles like the Thunderbolts and uh, the Punisher and Daredevil and Green Arrow all of these people have, have had their guy that gets them that gets that character and written a great run on that character so um, and Peter David was that guy for the Hulk he originally got the book because he, nobody else wanted it and he stayed there for 12 years so um, and this is just another really good book. Uh, there's nothing really negative I can say. It's a thicker book. You've got eight issues in here. So it is, as you can see, so it is a thicker book. Um, but it's just a really great, great story. And yeah, definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, I don't know how well you can see that montage. You there got the Dark Hulk there on the cover of Silent Screams. You can see the door there, that's the door they left the Green Hulk behind. And you sort of there have got all the people that sort of put this book together. You have the introduction by uh, by Marco and story so far. And then each cover is represented here, uh, as well as the main. Um, the art is very invocative of the time period which for me is always a plus because it makes me feel very nostalgic and gives me that nice warm nostalgic feel we then have the origins of the whole book and back at the origins and to the first appearances of the character we then have a two page profile on Peter David um, looking at his work then the thing on the art also a profile of the artist Dale Keown And then you've got a gallery of all the different versions of the Hulk. And finally, the end. As you can see from the spine, it's number 11. And you can continue your picture. But yeah, another really, really good book there. Um, and finally, to finish off this whistle, whistle stop tour, uh, we have Wolverine, the mini series by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller, which Back in the 80s, this must have been a dream team when these two were put together. As you can see, it's a thinner one. It's only four issues. Um, but it is well worth picking up still. Uh, it's a really great, great story. Wolverine's in love with this woman called Mariko Yashida. And he, she leaves and goes back to Japan. 
he follows her to try and see well, what's wrong. He finds out that her father, Lord Sinjin, is back and that he owed these guys some debts. So he repaid it by getting his daughter to marry this man. And then man is now beating, beating Mariko, trying to beat some respect into her. This really angers Wolverine. Uh, he then gets hit with these poisoned um, stars, these ninja stuff, throwing stars. And he wakes up and he's still weakened and he has a fight with Lord Sinjin who changes to a fight. And Lord Sinjin kicks his ass because he's still weakened. And, and then Wolverine wakes up in an alleyway where these guys are about to set upon him for being a foreigner. Uh, when this woman, when he meets this woman called Yukio who saves his life. Um, and then she's, she's been chased by these deadly assassins called the Hand. So Wolverine joins up with her to try and help her. But there's many twists and turns and the road Wolverine's going down eventually leads him back to a final showdown with Lord Sinjin. Um, a really good book. I love the setting that they set it in Japan. Um, it gave the book a really different tone because you know you had all these customs in Japan and it was really fascinating and interesting learning about the Japanese lifestyle um, while at the same time seeing Wolverine kick ass. Um, that was really good. It was a great also look into the character of Wolverine and what really makes this guy tick and he just really is unlucky with luck. He just never really seems to to, to, to have any luck. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really good book. As you can see, it's a thinner one. It's number four in the series. Um, the art as well. What I love about Frank Miller's art is that when somebody's angry, he won't always look at their face. Like there's a scene here where Wolverine arrived in Japan, meets his friend Asano Kimura. And then you got this scene, scene over here, sorry, where Wolverine down here sort of finds out that he's, his love is married, and you just go straight to the eyes and then to the hand to show that he's angry. And there's the, the, the other scene later on here where Mariko's been beaten up by her husband, and you just go to a shot of Wolverine's mouth to his eye to his arm turn into a fist. And then she sort of holds his arm and it sort of calms him. Um, so I just really love Frank Miller's art and, and the way he lays out things out. So that like he'll use other things to sort of portray the emotion of the scene than just your general look at the face. Yet yeah, they're upset. So I really enjoyed that. The art as well. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. But the inside montage you then have your cover bit inside. And you will read it and looking at who put this together. You have your introduction and your story so far. And each issue you have the, that bit and the thing. You have the cover reprinted. And um, what is really good here is the introduction on Wolverine. I'm the best there is at what I do. But what I do best isn't very nice. As you can see in there. Um, I'd love to know, is this the first time that that was written, or had that come from the X-Men book, or is this the first time, um, you know, there's a, a great bit of art where he's got that picture of Mariko. The art is just tremendous, I, I did really love the art, and the writing as well, you've got this gallery then of Wolverine's different outfits and different looks by different artists, you've then got the origins of Wolverine, then you've got uh, the writer Chris Claremont talking about Wolverine and finally you've got further reading um, so yeah another good book I know I haven't really said ne anything negative today about any of the books but that's because there's nothing negative to say you know I'd just be making it up and uh, I don't do that um, but yeah this book just really a real joy I enjoyed this one it's a real quick read because it's only four issues but you know it's, it's well worth picking up whether you're a Wolverine fan or not I think you'll find something to enjoy in it and give it a thumbs up. So that's me done for today. Um, I got through those books quicker than I anticipated. Um, I should have a comic, weekly comic book review up on Friday. I uh, don't know when my next one of these videos will be up. Um, it depends how, much, how quick I read through them. Um, I hope you're enjoying these videos. Um, please, if you are, uh, above, above me should be a subscribe button. Click that and you'll in your feed you'll get every week I release a new video it'll come up automatically in your feed you won't have to go looking for it 
and also uh, if you liked it or disliked it underneath there should be a thumbs up and a thumbs down give me a return number one you think is appropriate um, once again thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon bye for now